stop using Olaplex. I only wash my hair once a week. You will just know it is healthier. This can actually create hair loss. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Sofa Talk with Sophia Izzy. For today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you all of my do's and don'ts for how to get thicker hair and how to also maintain that thickness in your hair. Now this is coming from someone who has literally been through the works. I have had very, very thin hair due to losing it because of an illness to almost too thick hair where it was very bushy and I couldn't really handle it. And now I think I'm at a happy medium. These tips really, really should give you sleek glossy and thick hair so without further ado grab a drink grab a snack and let's chat and we will start off with the first one depending on your hair type washing it too often this can actually create hair loss and this is why you will probably notice most of your hair falls out in the shower I sometimes dread having showers because I'm like worrying as to how much hair is gonna fall out but I only wash my hair once a week this is obviously going to be different for everybody because people's hair gets greasier at different speeds I naturally have really curly hair so I think it sort of self washes you can actually train your hair to get it to build up its resistance and slowly get it to a state where you don't have to wash it so often maybe if you're washing your hair every three days you can maybe build it up to every five days or if you do want to wash your hair once a week I have definitely noticed that when I go on holiday and I'm in the pool and stuff and I wash my hair every day my hair really does come back a lot weaker and thinner to be honest if you can build it up to that resistance of not washing it as often you will naturally just see results because obviously the heat from the shower and things like that can just naturally cause breakage so that is my first tip Yep. Moving on to the next tip, which is one that I learned the hard way recently. Don't use too much hair product. Basically, the phrase less is more comes to mind here. For Christmas, I thought, I don't know what I want everybody to get me. How about I'll just ask for loads of different hair products, strengthen my hair routine, and this will make my hair so nice. No, I think I was putting like 15 to 20 different products on my hair thinking it would literally make it look like celebrity style It would be so amazing and then I started noticing a lot of hair loss a lot to the point where I was freaking out in the shower And was like I said dreading having showers because I was like what is going on? Why am I losing so much hair and I realized less is more I would say that when I go and do my hair routine now I only put roughly five products on so I will put on my oils and a bit of heat protectant and what I will then do is I will alternate between hair products because obviously I've got so many in my bathroom to ensure that I use them and to see the different results I won't ever put that many hair products on my hair ever again and this is your sign to not do that either it really can be damaging and can actually have an adverse effect linked to that this could be a controversial point but Stop using Olaplex. What do I mean by this? I don't mean completely cut out Olaplex, but I don't know if you've seen this on the internet. There are now rumors going around that Olaplex can actually cause hair loss. I do think that was contributing to my hair ending up a bit thinner. And since I've stopped putting on Olaplex, I haven't actually noticed any hair loss. I'm not saying it's entirely down to Olaplex, but here is what I would recommend you do with Olaplex. Use it every two to three weeks, even once a month. And let me tell you why. Where was Olaplex sort of founded in hairdressers? How often do you go to the hairdressers? Not weekly. I don't know what the regular amount of time to go to the hairdressers is, but usually it's minimum one month to every few months. Hairdressers will put on Olaplex on your hair every few months. And what's happened is people are now putting on Olaplex every time they wash their hair, every week, every few days, and it wasn't designed for that. It is a strong product that needs to be used sparingly. This will not apply to everybody. Some people will see amazing results from using Olaplex a lot of the time. But like I said, I stopped using it and I stopped having extreme hair loss. You do the maths. Just don't use it too much. And I promise you, less hair will fall out. Moving on to the next tip now, you should brush your hair from the bottom first, not from the top, because it will cause breakage. The best thing to do is grab your hair like this, get your hair brushed, detangle the knots like this, and then once that is all smooth, then go down all the way from the top. It's worth a go. Honestly, I have noticed great things since I started doing that. Tip number four, obviously this is just my recommendations, I'm not saying everybody is going to do this, but it is using heat on your hair once a week. If you can, try not to use it more than that. It's kind of self-explanatory. Heat equals heat damage equals your hair becoming more breakable equals hair loss. 
simple formula, but it is easier said than done. However, I have now found a way to do heatless curls, which is what I've kind of got here. So I've created a way of doing this where I sleep with my hair in a certain way, wake up and I have this look. And that really does mean I only have to use heat once a week, which is when I blow dry and straighten my hair. I'm not saying you have to categorically only have heat on your hair once a week for the rest of your life. I'm just saying if you are really, really looking to keep your hair thick or get your hair thicker, this is a number one rule, especially if you bleach your hair. I saw someone saying recently on the internet, it's either gonna have to be bleaching your hair and maybe getting damage from that or heat damage. You have to choose between because otherwise that's how you end up with really thin hair. It really, really weakens the hair follicles. Since I stopped straightening my hair every single day, my hair has become more thick. It's not needed trimming as often because it stayed strong and healthy and honestly, give it a try. Linking to that, another good tip is to use silk hair scrunchies because these are more gentle on your hair, which will in turn prevent breakage. When I do my nighttime hair routine to get my curls, I do use silk scrunchies. Here is an example of one that I've got. You can get them from the internet. I think Primark, you can get them in town at plenty of shops. They really do work and they prevent frizz. You can also get a silk pillowcase, which does the same thing. I don't have one of those, but I know categorically that they do work. Silk is linked to frizz prevention. It just maintains that healthy hair. Tip number six, certain hairstyles are a no-go. This is a well-known fact. Certain hairstyles can be really, really tight on the scalp, easily creating breakage. Examples of these would be extremely high ponytails, which is really pulling all the hair back because you don't want like half broken off tufts. It's probably better to have breakage near the bottom where you can fix it with a trim. If you can, do a sort of low ponytail at the back of your head. Ever since I started doing those, I don't get as much breakage and my hair has been so much happier and healthier. So give that a try. I'm not saying you can't do a high ponytail anymore or you can't do a slick back bun. I just mean you shouldn't do it every single day or all the time. Maybe just make it like a treat, like a once a week thing. When you do hairstyles, you naturally are going to lose more hair from the sort of like pulling process of getting it to go all neat. All of these tips, I'm not saying stop doing all of them entirely. These are things I have found that really, really help my hair stay healthy and thick so do them more sparingly and it will really pay off I promise now the next one which I am still working on myself and it is to prevent stress in your life so we all have a hormone in our body called cortisol and stress really really increases that hormone making really negative effects on the body such as hair loss I know that I have a lot of cortisol floating around my body which I think was also linking to my short burst of hair loss a few months ago tips to be less stressed I need them, so you tell me in the comments, but ones that I know categorically work include going for a walk, self-care such as baths, devoting time for yourself to do things that you know are relaxing for you, such as reading, maybe painting, listening to music, just anything that you find relaxes you. Try and get your cortisol levels down if you know you're stressed. There's lots of tips about that on the internet. I'm not a hormone specialist. This is just things that I have picked up through research. It is a known facts that that will create hair loss. Tip number eight, diet and multivitamins. Your diet has a key role to play in keeping and creating healthy hair. Same goes for vitamins. Obviously, vitamins are naturally occurring in food, but I would really recommend having multivitamins once a day because that will give you that added nutrients that you need if potentially you don't eat it in certain areas of your diet. And also if you don't live in a sunny place. So obviously that will then give you the vitamin D in the form of a multivitamin. I don't mean like hair hair gummies because I've never had a hair gummy. I don't really trust them. I'm quite skeptical of these things. Just general multivitamins that you can get at Tesco, pharmacies. I just have the, what are they called? Barrett's? I'm looking at them now. Barrett's, like raspberry and pomegranate ones, I think. Never had an issue with them. They've kept me feeling somewhat good. Moving on to diets now. Things such as protein are really, really good for strengthening the hair particles and then in turn creating thick hair. Your diet is linked to your health at the end of the day. Things that that are good for hair growth are eggs because they are rich in protein. They are one of the most well-known foods for hair growth actually. Other foods that are good for hair growth include salmon, nuts, 
I don't really like nuts, but if you do, they're good for hair growth. Avocado is really good. Things like legumes, chickpeas, lentils, beans, and peas. That's also because they have a high level of protein in them. Basically, anything that includes protein, it's your go-to here. Greek yogurt is good. Maybe just have a think as to how much protein you already include in your diet and see if you can make little tweaks here and there. I'm not saying go from zero to 100 with protein because that can also be bad. Everything in moderation. Number nine, getting regular trims. I know this works, but I hate going to the hairdressers and hate getting my hair cut. And I have a whole nother video on why I don't like going to the hairdressers. I'll attach it here for you. I had a traumatic experience at the hairdressers. However, regular trims will give you the immediate effect of thicker hair. Your hair naturally becomes a bit thinner towards the ends because of breakage. And when you get those cut off, your hair becomes like alive and thrives and also promotes hair growth. I think it's recommended to get a trim every like couple of months every like two to three months i wouldn't say that i do that i just know it works if you really really are desperate for thick hair do that because it will help you and then moving on to tip number 10, which is the final main tip, and that is colder water on your hair in the shower if possible. This really does work. And when I lost a lot of hair due to glandular fever, I was making sure that I did this tip. So let me explain how it works. I'm not saying for the whole shower, have it really cold. Try not to make it scalding hot. I know a lot of us love a boiling hot shower, but try and get the temperature down a little bit because hot, hot water is gonna create breakage not loads but it's not going to help the thickness do you know what i mean what i would used to do is i would have my shower at my regular temperature and then when i was washing out the conditioner aka the last stage of the hair wash process i would make the water quite a bit colder this is quite a shock to the system when you get out of the shower it will keep those hair particles strengthened rather than really hot and prone to snapping those are my top 10 do's and don'ts for how to get thicker hair and how to keep your hair thick because you can reach a thick level of hair but maintaining it can sometimes be difficult some other side tips I would recommend are have a look at what hair straighteners you're using. I used to use a different brand of hair straighteners and I noticed my hair was very, very thin. So I just use standard GHDs now. They seem to do the job. I haven't had any issue with them and I've noticed they keep my hair a lot thicker. I've also heard that certain towels can be really good for preventing hair breakage. I don't actually own one, but they're really easy to find on the internet. I need to get one for myself. I'm just such a procrastinator that I always forget. That whole combination of things diet stress levels the correct amount of hair products and certain hairstyles will keep your hair thriving it will create a nice shine you will just know it is healthier i can look back at pictures of myself i'll attach some on the screen for you i thought my hair was thick then what was i doing i was younger i didn't really have any sort of understanding of hair care i didn't have a hair care routine make sure you spray heat protectant sufficiently it needs a lot of that stuff i just have the l net one from i got it you can get it from savers you can get any you don't need to spend a fortune on hair care products for your hair to thrive and i also have done another video of hair products that i really recommend part one i will attach a little link for that on the screen as well it really really is just a process of trial and error and what works for you some products that will work for me won't work for somebody else and vice versa one product though that i think universally works is hair oils hair oil will make your hair smoother prevent frizz which is what we want because obviously thickness and frizz are not the same thing i used to struggle with the fact that my hair would be really thick but it looked bad because it was just so bushy it was so puffy and you can use them when your hair is dry which is great and when it's wet honestly they're like magic the one that i would recommend the most is moroccan oil thank you so much for coming along and listening to my little hair secrets on how to keep your hair nice and thick and how to increase hair growth let me know if you would like me to do any other kind of hair videos in the comments just write down any advice you want i'm happy to give all of my advice i've got curly hair advice i've got different hairstyle advice honestly i'm your gal i'm your guru thank you so much for watching if you did like this video then don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you next time <laughs>